Namaste, Fist Pump, Angus here, and today Katie asked for a video on alcohol. So let's sort of discuss alcohol. So if you are pursuing fat loss as your main goal, alcohol is probably a ridiculous thing to have for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's seven calories per gram. Fat is nine calories per gram, alcohol seven. Carbohydrates and protein are four calories per gram. Alcohol moves right to the front of the queue to get metabolized. It gets metabolized by your liver. Within your liver, it competes for a thing called NAD. NAD, is NAD has now become a really popular supplement because it helps keep you young. And alcohol will compete for that. It also kind of pushes fat into more fat storage and then causes scarification of the liver. This is more in like, you know, you're drinking a lot. Um, and that's how you get alcoholic fatty liver disease. Alcohol normally contains more calories than people think in, say, a bottle of wine. You are now drinking your calories. Um, and this is why people, particularly if you're measuring with lumen, you will find that the next day you are waking up with higher than normal numbers because you have loads of alcohol, you go to sleep, your digestion kind of slows down, the alcohol has to kind of work its way through. And if you have, say, two, three hundred calories worth of alcohol and say you burn about 80 to 90 calories per hour, we're looking at a few hours. Then you've got to break through the carbohydrates you ate because alcohol generally doesn't come alone. It comes with sneaky snacks and nibbles. So the next day you are kind of over your calories and you're going to see higher than normal number. And I know there's people out there that will wake up in the morning with a lower than normal number. And there is a good reason for that. Sometimes you just need to chill out. Sometimes the relaxing effect of alcohol, especially if you don't overindulge, can actually have a positive effect. When I did my DNA Fit coaching qualification, that was one of the things that came up. And one of the other things that came up was for my DNA result, alcohol has a positive effect. But I don't really care about alcohol. It's not one of my vices. It's not anything I'm particularly addicted to. And there's a good reason for that. So when I'm working with clients, a lot of them will absolutely love alcohol and then what i do is there's this book called the edge effect written by dr eric braverman and dr eric braverman is i think he's a neurologist slightly maybe on the quacky side of science but he has a quiz in this called the braverman uh, questionnaire which is still considered to be a good questionnaire in finding out which neurotransmitter you're dominant in braverman uses three main neurotransmitters you got dopamine GABA, serotonin, and acetylcholine. And what alcohol does is it lowers your dopamine, your serotonin, and it lowers your acetylcholine, but it actually boosts GABA. So GABA is your kind of like feel good, relaxing, kind of uh, neurotransmitter. And a lot of people are GABA dominant. A hell of a lot of people are GABA dominant. They're really nice, caring, nice people, mumsy would be a word. My mom is GABA dominant to crazy. She also loves wine. There's no, uh, that's not a coincidence. Um, but you can also be GABA deficient. So when you're GABA deficient, knocking down your other neurotransmitters and boosting up GABA will make you feel more like you. For me, I'm acetylcholine dominant, which means I'm a little bit more 80 a little bit more thinking in my head. So if I quickly explain the neurotransmitters. So dopamine is kind of like cocaine coffee. Boom, it's an upper. GABA is more of a kind of, I don't want to say downer in the downer way, but it's more a friendly cuddle, uh, volume, alcohol, more in that line. Serotonin is more like cannabis, getting stoned, chill out with your mates. And acetylcholine is more LSD, Alice in Wonderland, crazy. So for me, I'm more at that end of the, the spectrum. So it lowers my acetylcholine so I don't feel like me. And it makes me more GABA, which just doesn't gel with me and my personality. Where other people maybe don't like being acetylcholine dominant, so they're going to find great joy in alcohol. Uh, I'd find more joy in coffee because it takes my acetylcholine, drives up my dopamine, makes me feel like super good, get stuff done, motivated, get things done. Where GABA, at the end of the week, you want to boost in GABA because it's like Friday, you had a rubbish day or a rubbish week, and then you have some wine, cheese and nibbles and you feel great. Trouble is, it's a kind of depressant. Um, my town I live in, a lot of tradespeople, they work really hard all week. They fire the alcohol the weekend, crazy heavy drinking, Friday, Saturday, get absolutely hammered, raise that GABA, have a good time with their mates. By Monday comes, they're depressed because it's a depressant and they feel awful, they can't get motivated on a Monday. It takes them all week to kind of get 
wired up again and then they do the same thing and then they're in that cycle week in week out where they're depressing themselves kind of upping themselves for coffee depressing themselves upping themselves depressing themselves upping themselves so your neurotransmitters have a lot to play with how much you like alcohol but if you're on a diet it's something you should really avoid and you should find other things that make you feel good or kind of supplement with your neurotransmitters. Another book that I quickly mentioned is this one, The Mood Cure by, she's called Julia Ross. And that's actually a pretty cool book. Again, it goes into the neurotransmitters and it goes into little feeding. I think it's that one or the diet cure. I can't remember which one it is. She mentions a Native American a client that she had that was an alcoholic and it's very prevalent in Native American communities is this kind of high rise of alcohol and it's because their diet has changed so much so they get a lot more L-tyrosine into their diet and L-tyrosine is a building block for dopamine so these guys are meant to be motivated and driven and they're all just alcoholics now which is really tragic so she gives this guy high dose of uh, L-tyrosine and it's not even that crazy high dose I think it's about two grams which is a couple of pills you would get that in in a natural food source as well and the guy literally by the time he leaves the office feels great and feels amazing so this is something to look into the Braverman test if I can find a link if not you can you don't need to buy the book you can get the questionnaire online and it will give you your what you're dominant in and it will also give you what your deficiencies in and it will also give you recommendations of pills and supplements you can take Huge warning, if you have mental health issues or you're seeing a medical professional, please take this with extreme, long, extreme caution. Take that with extreme caution. Even things that you can buy over the counter can have a massive effect, especially if you're on um, medication for mental health issues. So take that under extreme advising. Um, if you are on medication, you should, probably shouldn't be on alcohol as well. So that's my quick video on alcohol. 